Oh, oh, there he is. Good. You made it. I waited in the lobby for a while, but we were debating whether it would be better if I waited for the person who's examining me, or if I went down and taught and hoped that it impresses you that my commitment to the class overwhelmed my commitment to my own career. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to continue talking about the unit step function, which, remember, is also called the uh, heavy side function. All right, so there was actually somebody named heavy side, unfortunately. Well, I mean, it's not bad, it's not bad that there was that person. It's just it's kind of a sad name. So. In any case, uh, let's see, after we talk about unit step function, uh, uh, we're short on time today. If we uh, get through it quickly enough, we'll talk about impulses. Uh, oh, Kaiwei, yeah, I know you like this because you've been taking these psych classes. Yes. Okay, so yesterday we finished uh, the lecture with a little puzzle. Uh, so let me remind you, before I remind you of the puzzle, uh, we define a function for some positive number c, and it looks like this. It, it just sits at 0 until you get to c. And then at c, it jumps up to 1. Right? And it goes from there. And it stays at 1 forever. And we call this function right, u sub c of t. Right. And uh, we also figured out if you wanted this step function, right, which goes up to 1, so we call it a unit step function. If you wanted it to go the other way, start up here and then drop down to 0. So it would look like this. Then you could just use 1 minus u c of t. Is that right? Okay, and then finally, I left you with this puzzle. Uh, if you chose numbers C and D, so here C is less than D, of course both greater than zero, and you wanted the function to step up at C and then step down at D, how can we do that using all right, these UCT functions? So what are you saying today? It's U C minus U D. Okay, now we had uh, another one up there where we included this one and so forth. Well, let's check this first, and if it doesn't work, then we'll try another one. So let's see. Uh, now, before you get to C, both U C of T and U D of T are, should be zero. Right? U D is zero all the way up until D. U C is zero all the way up until C. So before you get to C, they're both zero. And sure enough, when you subtract zero from zero, you get zero. Good. Now what about between C and D? Well, let's see. Once you get to C, then this first thing should become a one. But before you get to D, this should be still a zero. So sure enough, right? One minus zero is one. Good. And then once you get to D, well, then, well, this one was already a one. This one becomes a one. And so their difference is 1 minus 1, right? That's 0. Cool. Okay, so that's exactly right. Good. So using combinations of these uct functions, you can, right, we have our uct up and uct down. Uh, between these two functions, uh, we can write down all sorts of really cool step functions. And these are, of course, uh, useful uh, in physics when. Right. Maybe you have some energy which is going from for some certain amount of time and then being turned off, and then some certain amount of time and then being turned off. Okay, so, uh, well, if it's useful in physics, then there's probably a differential equation that's going to have this in it. If there's a differential equation that has uh, one of these UCT functions in it, then we want to solve that differential equation, of course, what are we going to do to such an equation? Well, the only thing we know how to do is just do what? 
we take the we take the Laplace transform. Okay, fine. Uh, if we're going to take the Laplace transform of such a differential equation, then eventually we're going to have to know the Laplace transform of this X function. Okay, so let's uh, figure that out. That can't be too hard. Make sure I didn't give a number. No. Okay, so by definition, okay, this will be the integral from zero to infinity of uh, u c of t times u minus s t d t. Okay, how can we simplify this? Okay, so you want to break this integral up yeah, at c, right? Somehow that c should be important. Now, between 0 and c, what does this function equal? 0. zero. Okay. So what does the integrand equal between 0 and c? 0. If you integrate 0, um, what do you get? Oh, yeah, 0. Okay. A constant, I like <laughs> Indeed. Well, okay, so between 0 and c, this thing doesn't contribute anything, right? The graph of it is just 0. So actually, this is just equal to the integral from c to infinity. Right. Fine. Um, once you get to c, what is u c of t? Yeah, it's 1, right? That's the definition. You can pop up to 1. So the integrand just becomes e to the minus st. Ah, so now this is this is very nice. Kylie? So the u c of t equals to 1 because of that constraint, or it's in every case? This is the definition, right? u c of t is a piecewise defined function. It's either 0 or 1. It's 0 when t is less than c, and it's 1 when t is greater than or equal to c. It steps up at c. So it makes it very easy to do this sort of calculation. Uh, okay, so now we need an integral, but this is child's play. Okay. Fine. We need to take a limit as this top fit goes to infinity. And of course, this minus right, is going to take care of it, right? As t goes to infinity, this thing's just going to die. So the only thing we're going to care about is when t is c. And let's see, okay, you're going to do a minus when you do the c, so that minus will go away. And you'll get e to the minus sc over s. And here s, of course, as usual, is positive. Cool. So, so we have a new Laplace transform to add to our, our toolkit. Uh, so let's see. Ah, yes. Uh, what's that number? 414. So, I'm going to put this together into something even a little more useful. So, let's assume you have some function f such that L of f of t, right, the Laplace transform of f exists. for s greater than some a, which should be at least 0. So if c is some non-negative, I'm sorry, I want some positive number, then the Laplace transform, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to shift our function by c and multiply it by the unit step function. Okay, so why why would we want to do this? Well, what is this unit step function going to do? Everything between zero and c, it's going to kill. And then once you get up to c, it's just going to give you f of t minus c. 
So basically, okay, well, this just shifts everything to the right by C. Yeah. So what's happening? What's, uh, what's going on here? Take the function, shift it to the right. All right so now 0 goes over to C. And then you're killing everything before C. So basically, it, it's like you killed everything before 0, and then you moved it over to the right. Okay. okay. Same function after that. Okay. So the Laplace transform of this function is going to be e to the minus sc times the Laplace transform of f for s uh, greater than a. Now, this formula is not usually, uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. The most useful way to use this formula is usually right to left. Right? What will happen is you've computed the Laplace transform of your differential equation. You end up with some function you know how to take the, Laplace, the inverse Laplace transform of it. But then you notice it's multiplied by an exponential. And then you say, ah. So this must have come from that function. Okay. And so then you know, OK, my y is equal to that. Okay. So let's give a, a proof of this. It's going to be very easy. Yeah. Just use a little substitution. And then we'll do an, an example. OK, so well, we can start with the, the left side. So the Laplace transform of the unit step function times the translate of our function f equals well, the integral from 0 to infinity up to the Oh, we forgot something, didn't we? What did we forget? E of course. Got to have your exponential. So again, uh, up here is going to kill everything before C. So we don't need to worry about zero here, we just need to start at C. And once you get to C, well this just becomes a 1, so you don't have to worry about it. So you just get left with f of t minus c, e to the minus st. And at this point it should be pretty clear what's going on. You're basically reducing yourself to a Laplace transform of f, only it's shifted over by c. And we know from what we did earlier that if you want to shift something, you need an e to the minus sc. Okay, so let's just do the quick substitution. Uh, say v equals t minus c. So that, uh, let's see, t will become c, or v plus c. And dv is dt. So using that substitution, oh, well, let's see, let's check the boundaries. Uh, if t is c, then v is what? Zero. zero. Oh, that's really nice, because it's going to take us back to our zero to infinity. All right, of course, if t goes to infinity, so will v. All right, so we get f of v, and then we get e to the minus Okay, now S stays, but T becomes V plus C. And then we make DT into a DV. And now you can see where this E to the minus SC is going to come from. Right? This breaks up as E to the minus SV times E to the minus SC. But E to the minus SC is just a constant. You can pull that out. So E to the minus SC. And then this, of course, what's left over is just, well, that's just the Laplace transform. So very straightforward. Okay, so now we'll do a, uh, an intense example. All right, so I'll need Kaiway's help. Uh, since 
This is where I try to pretend I know something about electronics and physics. All right, so we have a simple electric circuit. Now, if I understand what these words mean, uh, this must be something like uh, you have a power source, like a battery, you have a wire, and there must be something resisting, like a light bulb. All right. Uh, to the best of my understanding, Kaiway, did I get that right? Uh, okay, that, that's okay. That's what I think a simple electric circuit is. Okay, good. Uh, we're going to assume that the simple electric sol circuit has um, a unit voltage pulse. Right? Okay, they, okay. Zuin is nodding her head. This means she knows what I'm talking about. All you have taken physics now, so you're actually ahead of me. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me let me tell you what the pulse looks like. Uh, it's very simple. Okay. It's either going to be zero or one. Yeah. Uh, when is it going to be zero? What's well, going to be zero between zero and time equals zero and five, and then after time equals twenty, and it will be one. Uh, be oh dear. Well, I know I want it to be between 5 and 20, but I have a problem with my, uh, yeah, let's say at 5 it turns on, and at 20 it's going to uh, uh, turn off. So at 5 it'll be 1, and then at 20 it'll turn off. I think that'll be okay. We'll see what I want it to be. Uh, okay, so, of course, I don't really want to write it this way. Right? How do I want to write G of T? This is just a unit step function, really. Yeah. Well, not one of them. What is it? What is it actually? How can I write this with my unit step functions? G I don't want to use G. I want to use U. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. All right. So this is just the, the function which starts at zero, and when you get to time equals five, pops up, and when you get to time equals twenty, steps down. Okay. It's exactly like we did at the beginning. So this is just u5 minus u20. Okay, so um, I'm interested in finding the, uh, the charge of the capacitor, and, and that's given by this differential equation. Now remember that when you're dealing with these simple electric circuits, this charge is always given by a, a second order differential equation, constant coefficient. So, okay, so this is how it's given. There's our, our pulse, and if we can solve for y, then we'll find the charge of the capacitor. Okay, so when I wrote down the problem, we can work it out. So what do I do, of course? Step one. Of course, that's how we solve every problem in here. We take the little Laplace transform. So let's see here. Uh, I'll get two times the Laplace transform plus the Laplace transform plus two times the Laplace transform equals. Ah, okay, so what does it equal? Well, it's the Laplace transform of u five minus the Laplace transform of u twenty. Right, we'll work those out on the next line, whatever they are. Okie dokie day. So, at this point, you say, uh, well, see, I have some formula for the plus transform of a derivative or a second derivative. Let's see, it's something like s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0. And then you say, but I don't know actually y of 0 and y prime of 0. Okay, so you can ask me, what are y of 0 and y prime of 0? Go on, ask what me. What is y of 0 and y prime of 0? That's a good question. Okay, let me tell you. <laughs> so we're going to assume the easiest possible case, which is that they're both 0. Okay, so in the beginning, right, you're not putting any charge into it. Okay? And the derivative is also zero, right? You haven't been putting any charge here. Okay, so it's really at rest. So for the first five seconds, it's just going to be staying at rest. Yeah, nothing is happening. 
Okay, fine. So that makes so, uh, so sorting this out much easier because it's going to be okay. We said s squared times l of y, and then there's supposed to be two more terms that multiply things by y of zero and y prime of zero, but those are zero, so those terms go away. Very nice. What about l of y prime? We'll see. That's s times L of Y minus Y of zero, which is again zero. Okay, so that's easy. And then the last one stays as is. Okay, and then we need the other side. So we need to remember the Laplace transform of uh, U5 and U20. And, ah, there we go. They're given by this formula. So we're going to get one of them will have a 5 here and the other will have a 20. And you subtract them, they have the same denominator, so we can write it as e to the minus 5s minus e to the minus 20s over s. Let me double check that. e to the minus 5s. Okay. Are you guys happy with it? There it is. Are you happy? Yeah. Okay. okay, so now of course we've done what we want to do. We've taken the differential equation, we've turned it into an algebraic equation. So now we can solve this, right? We'll pull out the L of Y. Okay, and so then we're left with 2s squared plus s plus 2, which we'll divide. This will equal e to the minus 5s uh, minus e to the minus 20s over s times 2s squared plus s plus 2. Whenever I see a quadratic, the first thing I want to do is factor it. Will that factor? Discriminant is negative, so it has no real roots. Ugh. Terrible. Okay, so what's next? So uh, let me let me rewrite this over here, uh, but let me shorten it up a little bit. So uh, L of y is e to the minus 5s minus e to the minus 20s times, let me call it h of s. Okay, so where h of s equals 1 over s times 2s squared plus s plus 2. So you'll notice, of course, I could break this up as two different pieces. I have an e to the minus 5s, h of s, and an e to the minus 20s, h of s. And I'm interested in which functions are going to give me these as Laplace transforms. What am I going to use? Well, before I can talk about partial fractions, which is what happens when I get up to here, I, I mean, I, I'm looking at some function, and I want to know its Laplace transform. And of course, eventually we want to use partial fractions for that, because it's multiplied by an exponential. What? Ah! Theorem. This is very good. I knew there was a reason we proved this theorem. Yeah. Remember what I said? What was, how were we going to use it? Yeah? So when you have some function, you know the Laplace transform, right? but it's multiplied by some exponential, and you want to find the original function. So, let's see. Uh, 
say, I don't know, h of t uh, is a function such that its Laplace transform is big H of s. None of you follow orders. I said say it. <laughs> what are you going to do with these kids? didn't say Simon says. <laughs> I'm not Simon. <laughs> okay. So if h of t is the function whose Laplace transform is big H of s, then by theorem 414, I know that right, I can rewrite each of those component terms as the Laplace transform of this sort of function. So this would say that... Uh, the Laplace transform of, okay, so the first one will be with a 5. U5 of t times, well, here f is my little h, so h of t minus 5. Okay, so that covers the first term. And then the second term will be u sub 20 of t, h of t minus 20. Okay, so if the Laplace transform, which I should not find, but the equals, okay, so this is by 414, we know that if the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of this function, well, we have uniqueness of Laplace transform. So this function will have to be our y. So all we now have to do is figure out what h is, and we're done. Okay, and as the link said, of course, how are we going to compute the inverse Laplace transform of this? Well, we'll have to use partial fractions. Okay, so let's see how, how clever we are about doing that. All right, so we have 1 over s times 2s squared plus s plus 2. How do I break this up? 1 over s. 1 over s? A. Okay. A. I, I thought you already knew the answer. I was going to be impressed. <laughs> Okay, so A over S? Plus C, B, C, A, B, C, C, A. All right, what letter should I use on top? B, X plus C. Ah, okay, B, well, I'm not going to use X, that would be silly. Oh, All right, I'll use B, S, S plus C, right? This is an irreducible quadratic, so we have to use a linear term on top. Okay, so we'll, we'll clear denominators. So 1 equals a times 2s squared plus s plus 2 plus bs plus c times s. Okay, and here, uh, I mean, things are, um, there's a lot of easy things we can say immediately. For instance, uh, let's see, we have 2a here. That's the only constant term. So a is minus, a is a, 2a equals 1 and a is a half. All right. We also have here, okay, a 2a s squared and a b s squared. So 2a plus b has to equal 0. Of course, 2a is just 1. So 1 plus b is 0, so b is minus 1. And then what's left over? Well, we have a cs and an as. So a plus c is 0, and, well, a is a half, so c is minus a half. Okay, cool. We can do those pretty quickly. So uh, h of s equals a half over s plus, okay, let me make it into a minus, since these are both minuses, um, s plus a half over 2s squared plus s plus 2. All right, okay, so we can immediately see what's going to happen here. You pull the half out, you have 1 over s, the inverse of plus transform will just be 1. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so this is the interesting one. So what am I going to do with that? Completing the square, what a wonderful idea, right? Whenever you have some nasty quadratic on the bottom and you can't factor it, completing the square is generally a good idea. First step of completing a square, you've got to get rid of that 2. 
So let me let me write this a half times one over s because that's how we'll think about it anyway. And then we'll have a half. And well, let's see. On the bottom, you're going to have s squared plus a half s plus one. Okay. So the middle term was a half s. The way you got to be careful with that half s. <laughs> uh, how do you complete the square? You take the middle term, you divide it by 2, so a half divided by 2 is a fourth, and then square. you square it, so that's a sixteenth, right? And then you also just subtract 16. Okay, and then you can factor it as s plus a fourth squared. Okay, and then we had this plus sixteenth minus one sixteenth. The minus one sixteenth comes from the one that we had, so that leaves you with uh, 15 sixteenths. Ah, now this looks pretty good. Right? It doesn't look great, but it looks pretty good because this looks like one of our uh, sine or cosine Laplace transforms. Shifted a little bit, but almost the same thing. Okay, now, uh, you're supposed to, well, you have an S on top, so we know this is going to come from sine or cosine? Cosine. Right, cosine, right? If it, it should be the S comes from the sine, but it's not. All right, it's the other way around. So it's coming from the, the cosine which means you should have just an s up here, or if you have an s plus a fourth, you should have an s plus a fourth up here. Okay, so we'll make this s plus a fourth. Okay, but you can't just turn s plus a half into s plus a fourth. There's still a fourth missing. Okay. Fine, so how can we uh, play with this? Well, um, yeah, we better break this up. Okay, so we have a half times, okay, we have s plus a fourth over s plus a fourth squared plus 15 sixteenths, oops, okay, uh, plus, then we have a fourth over s plus a fourth squared plus 15 sixteenths. I think we should be able to uh, sort this out now. So let's uh, let's see where these are going to go. So this one over s, we already said that's just going to give you a one. Okay. Remember when I do this squiggly line, I mean I'm doing a Laplace transform, inverse Laplace transform here. Okay, now this is of that form, you know, s squared plus a squared, and then an s on the top. So that comes from cosine of the square root of this thing on the bottom, right, times t. Okay, so you should have a cosine of, well, the square root of this will be square root of 15 over 4. Now, I want to put a t here, but the thing is, is we've, we've shifted things, right, mm -hmm. by, a, by 1 over 4. So that's going to shift the t that we started with. Okay. Make sure I everything. Actually, no. That's actually that's fine. That's not going to shift there. No, no. The t will get. Sorry. The t will get shifted, of course, when we multiply. Mm -hmm. Okay. To shift it over by one fourth, we have to multiply e to the e to the negative one fourth, right? Since we're going to the left because of the plus, it's e to the negative one-fourth. Okay, so let's get that out in front. e to the negative one-fourth t. Okay, so that shifts it. Okay, so that part is okay. Now this part, ah, there's no s on top, so this must be coming from, from sine. Okay, now, you should be getting sine the same thing, right? The square root of 15 over 4 times t, you're shifting it, so, well, let me put the e on the other side because I've run out of room. Okay, you get e to the minus one-fourth t, but there's still something not quite right. Yeah. Okay, what's not right? For the sine one, you're supposed to have s squared plus a squared on the bottom and then a on the top, but a should be root 15 over 4, but we only have 1 over 4. So we multiply by root 15 and then divide by root 15. So out front, we'll have 1 over root 15. Okay. So again, you're, 
To use our formula, you need root 15 over 4. We don't have it. We have 1 over 4. So if you multiply this by root 15, you'll have it. But of course, you can't just multiply by root 15. You have to divide by it as well. So that's what we do there. Okay. So we'll put it all together. So h of t is going to equal, let's see, half minus uh, e. Let's see, they both have e to the minus one fourth t's in them, so I can pull that out. Times uh, cosine root 15 over 4t plus, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, 1 over root 15 sine of root 15 over 4t. Oh, what did we miss? Oh, the 1 half, of course. Thank you. So then, to get your y, you just need to write this down, replacing all the t's with t minus 5's or t minus uh, 20, as the case may be. Okay. So we did it. Very good. Okay, I won't rewrite the answer because this will take a while. Uh, Again, it's unfortunate that we had this method because I think we probably could have guessed that answer. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, we're almost out of time. Uh, yeah, since we have five minutes, I'll not give me enough time to start the next section on impulse functions, but it will give me time to, to show you a graph of the solution to this thing. Just uh, so we can see what's going on a little bit. If we were in our other room, it would be much nicer. We have the, uh, the projector. I can just put this on there and show it. OK, so what's that? Same to the side of the projector. You have to take the Oh, It'll take me longer to figure out how to open the thing, I guess. OK, I'll just try to copy it. Tomorrow, if, if my graph is that bad, tomorrow I'll show it at the beginning. So. OK. Uh, so, when functions get this complicated, uh, even though I know how to use calculus to you know, give myself a good guess for what the graph is going to look like, I don't use it. Uh, I let uh, Mathematica do it. Or, uh, in this case, I used Wolfram Alpha, which is actually turning out to be quite a nice tool. Uh, if you, have you guys ever gone to that? It's called... So Wolfram makes Mathematica, and they have a, a new website powered by it called Wolfram Alpha, and you can go there and ask it math problems, and it will show you solutions to it. Oh. It's, it's very, very nice. Uh, so I had it graph this for me. So, so but let's just talk a little bit about what we're getting. Uh, so, well, first, the scale here. Everything is sitting here less than 1. Uh, and on the bottom, this will be the time. Okay, I don't. Be a little farther out. Let me make this to scale a little better. Okay, we'll put a 5 there, we'll put a 10 there. And then I don't really need the 5s. Okay, why don't I need the fives anymore? Well, the only reason I care about the five is because that's where the, the thing turned on. Right? If you remember, uh, yeah, this charge started at t equals five. So it's very easy seeing what happens between zero and five. It, uh, it does that. There's no charge on the capacitor until five. Okay, and then at five, it, it's going to shoot up because that's when, boom, you send the charge through. Uh, so that's going to pop up to here. And then, it, well, by the time you get to 10, it starts to turn around and come back down. Uh, let's see. Strangely enough, at around 15, it's going to oscillate back up and then start coming back down. 
Um, and then at 20, what do you expect to happen? Well, at 20, you turn the charge off. And not coincidentally, it, ooh, it plummets. It does turn around, however, and it starts to oscillate and then it dampens out. And it goes away. And actually, this is going down quite a bit more than it should. Uh, so I'll do something which you're not supposed to do, which is I'll put the number as if this is all the, the right scale, but it's not really just want to do that about there. Don't want to. So, so this is a, this will actually, you, okay, it's not so hard. You solve this differential equation, and you can actually see at any given point, right, what the charge going to the capacitor is going to be. Any questions? All right. Um, now, remember yesterday, before we started the section on the unit step function, what my, my big question that I wanted to answer was? Yeah, I wanted a, I wanted a function whose Laplace transform is just one. So this is our first step towards it. Tomorrow, uh, we'll introduce an impulse function. And an impulse function, what we're going to be doing, is well, it's like these step functions, right? Except instead of assuming that the charge is always going to be, or the pulse is always going to give you a one, what we're going to do is always assume that there's kind of, the impulse total is one, but it can happen for very, very short periods of time and have very, very you know, tall graphs in the sense that you can send a lot of charge in a very short amount of time, or a little charge in a long amount of time, right? And we're going to see what happens as the amount of time goes to zero. But we always still get a, a total of one amount of charge. And that's going to give us something which, well, we're going to treat it like a function. We're going to call it a function, but it's not actually a function, which is a little strange. And it'll help us solve our, question, our problems.